hey what's up uh please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings we're in the next part now i really just want to get i hate when 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 my stories like lean over into the next part and the next part because i like to seal a point in one part so that just in case people catch me just in this one part they still have all the context but anyway whatever in the previous part i was talking about how this church was trying to hook me up with some dude and the dude was too effeminate right he was he looked like he was saved out of a life of homosexuality and i i just was not attracted to that and indeed i make a, a solid point i get to be attracted to my husband right and so it wasn't problematic that they tried to hook me up with vibrata i gave him the name vibrata it was not problematic that they tried to hook me up with vibrata what became taxing to me remember i was ignoring my dreams in this church and i imagined the gifts maybe were seized i was not taking my dreams too seriously uh two weeks after this chick's rec this chick recommends that i should perhaps consider dating vibrata uh you know allowing him to like propose marriage and whatnot for us to marry basically i, I didn't even think that vibrata was attracted to me so even th that suggestion for me it was also like first of all vibrata also wants to has to want me he's the guy in this equation but even then i'm not attracted to vibrata you know what i mean so no i can't be with vibrata i, I, I don't know i don't even think i responded I, I must have responded i just don't remember what i said because i found it weird that she recommended vibrata to me anyway two weeks later two weeks later i get a dream and in this dream, Vibrata, it wasn't a dream, it was a nightmare. Vibrata is in my dream. Let me describe Vibrata to you in Waking Life. He was just such a, a sweet, tranquil, tranquil, nice guy. He was, guys, think Ed Sheeran. Think Ed Sheeran. I mean, does Ed Sheeran look like the kind of guy that would just be sitting over a cauldron doing a spell? Hey? Hmm? Even though love is a photograph, maybe I will be loving you till we're 70. Imagine Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran is not effeminate, right? He's totally a like dude, dude. This, imagine the effeminate version of Ed Sheeran. Does that look like somebody that could harm a fly? No. Very, very sweet guys nice and i say ed sheering because he also was like this redhead you know like fair fair skin uh, a couple of freckles here and there just a really cute dude that if he was totally straight i was going for that right going he was cute and he was tall so perfect height and everything but i don't want to be with a dude that looks like he's still struggling with his sexuality even though he's in christ i thought he was in christ i then get a dream about vibrata himself not about this queen you know the this honey queen of the ministry of young adults she was the one that recommended i be with him and then i get a dream about him i get a dream about vibrata and guys yes in this dream yes the 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 mixes of what i've seen right historically there is this guy that i used to have massive feelings for at mtn that turned out to be a most prolific satanist uh and he had put a lot of witchcraft on me i didn't know what was going on at some point i thought he was my future husband i was seeing things that i was not supposed to be seeing in the spirit realm with him um god was exposing that he was into witchcraft but like i said in the beginning stages of my spiritual gifting i underestimated what i was seeing so i did not know what it was i if anything it misinterpreted it to mean that it was confirming him as my husband in this dream that guy was already busy with me and i was already getting funny strange dreams with him but i had a massive crush uh, huge feelings for the dude from my company right did i still have feelings for this dude once i came to christ i think i might have just gotten over him but there was a time when i had uh very strong feelings for this dude in my nightmare about vibrata he kept on morphing into this guy and himself this guy and himself this guy and himself right the dream was exceptionally dark like dingy and he was driving a vehicle that looked like it was one of those old school cars like but in modern days so it was basically just about to pack up all rusted and everything and this in this car that he was driving i was his passenger and he was looking at me in the dream with this like menacing sort of kind of joker smile on his face and he kept on morphing in and out of this other satanist guy that i had massive feelings for that i used to work with at mtn he kept on morphing into that guy and then himself that guy and then him himself remember in waking life i have no feelings for vibrata vibrata and he's extremely effeminate so i'm uh, like not trying to be with a dude that is you know a closet homosexual i'm not trying to do that not again i had a history with that i spoke about that in my previous part i'm not doing it again but in my dream he was so masculine it, you know witchcraft it's almost as if though it it tries to mimic or manifest 
a reality of what people wish they had in the eyes of the beholder so that they see what is not but has been manipulated into their understanding here is a man that i had some pretty crazy feelings for like just lofty and it was one of the biggest feelings or biggest crushes of my life frankly this dude from mtn and this oki in my dream the brother that i did not like at all in waking life kept on morphing into this dude from mtn and himself and he was so masculine no touch of bouquet no touch of effeminateness in him at all like it existed very flagrantly so in waking life none of it was in my dream he was a man in the worst way he was all thick and he kept morphing in and out of this character of this other dude to a point where the feelings y'all be thinking Gorobella is a black man's disease <laughs> the feelings that I had for the witch from my company the sorcerer from my company they just flooded into my heart in my dream for the broader they kept on morphing into this guy in and out in and out while driving me in this old school vehicle I don't know where we were going where we were going but we were I was being driven and I kept on seeing the biggest crush I've ever had in my life be replaced by this guy every so often to a point where the feelings I had for real once upon a time for this other guy I now had in my dream for vibrata and vibrata in my dream was masculine in a way that he is in waking life and so therefore the qualms that I had with him in waking life were non-existent in the dream and he was driving me everywhere when I woke up from that dream I was like oh <laughs> what in the world did I just see <laughs> I, I was like what did I just see why am I dreaming about this guy I don't even think about him why am I dreaming about this dude from church what what's going on and why was he let's say the dude from work's name was Tarara I was like why why was he morph, morphing into Tarara's character Tarara is a guy I had feelings for maybe I might still have feelings for him but like I'm actually trying to bury that stuff in the past um Tarara was a pro prolific witch I however did not know what in the world I was seeing about Tarara so long story short what God was showing me in my dream is that there is a man that wants you to love him the way that you loved this other guy but just like this other guy that I'm protecting you from he's heavily involved in darkness guys and you be thinking Archie, that black people are the ones into the stuff I love spell I love me tender love me sweet spell it turns out that Kimang Vibrata did want me and Vibrata is the one that likely sent the queen of the uh, uh, young adults ministry to pick to ask me like you know when you send a girl over to talk to like as a guy you send a, a friend that you know that knows your crush to talk for you Vibrata did that he was scared to approach me himself I'm like do you really like me like that dude was so effeminate I don't know but bottom line is it now absolutely did not matter if at all he had conquered homosexuality or effeminateness because at the end of the day so what if you conquer it or so what if you actually truly have a crush on a girl if you are involved in the occult i don't even think that vibrata had feelings for me because vibrata was kind of there is a vibrata wasn't saved he was effeminate meaning that whatever struggles he had with effeminateness or homosexuality he could not possibly conquer them because he's not in christ yet so therefore vibrata wanted a wife to continue to play church and vibrata was successfully recruited into the occult the coven in the church and he was made to do a spell remember i was telling you guys in my earlier parts the church if at all you are an effervescent christian in a church where there is a coven running and they can't turn you or they can't water you down they will get rid of you well before they tried to get rid of me they tried to water me down or to handle me by us appointing me a handler the handler of which would have been my husband and when they looked around to try and find a man in the occult that belonged to their coven that was still single the brother was the only one that i would ever consider not consider but that was age appropriate 
Do you understand? And so they tried to connect me with Vibrata. So the dream that I got with Vibrata basically driving me. Usually a vehicle in a car, in a dream, where you are being driven instead of you driving is a form of control. Where it is that they are, this person is going to be the one that's going to determine the course of my life. He's going to be my handler. He was appointed to be my handler. My handler, the one that would be driving the vehicle so that I could be subdued. He was driving, but the car that he was driving in the, in the dream, like I said, it was old, it was rusted, one of those like, it was like an ancient vehicle in modern days. And usually that level of regression um, evidences, again, witchcraft when you dream about being in a school or your grandmother's house or an environment where you grew up as a child whereas you're living in a different space now it's, it's all regression it's like being taken back to a place that you have already progressed past and i am now saved i was now at that stage by then already saved and i was looking forward to a future in christ with blessedness in him and they were trying to take me back to a place where i'm just doing things that are of the past now i am st stuck and stranded in my old ways or in old uh defeat the defeat of my old days when i came to christ i became more than a conqueror i became one that was pu pushing past barriers to entry i was pushing past generational curses of my family and that guy if at all i had successfully been made his wife would have made me stranded in the grain of my former life that was without victory over curses in my life old raggedy car he be driving and the mix with the guy that i had feelings for was i guess what the spell used in order to inspire feelings for him in me it was corbella there, there is a man that was deeply involved in the occult that i did have feelings for and so when then he kept on morphing between him and that guy it was supposed to inspire feelings in me that's how that's why i know what corbella looks like guys that's why I know what Corobella looks like. Every time a guy slaps me with it, I just roll my eyes. I know what it looks like. Either there is a lot of sexual perversion in the dream, or I've got heavy feelings for someone I never used to like before, and they also tend to wear a makeup, a constitution, um, that is not the one that they have in waking life. They are either bigger, thicker, more handsome, their teeth are whiter in dreams, they're muscular when they're actually kind of scrawny in waking life. They have got all the dreamy things that I wish they would have in waking life, but they then they, the, the intention is for it to lend over into my waking space. If I was not a conquering Christian filled by the Holy Spirit, it would have worked to make me have feelings for a guy that I don't. These things are planted in you for real. So women, don't underestimate when you suddenly have a crush on a guy that you thought was disgusting yesterday. Do not imagine that, you know, he grew on you. Sometimes it's inspired into your members by witchcraft where you dream so besotted with someone that you historically just didn't even like to look at. Uh, you wake up in the morning all of a sudden enamored with this person and the feelings linger they linger and I will use an example that might be disquieting for some but I have to ha use it it's like uh, a sex a sex dream like a wet dream when you wake up from a, 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 a dream that is very heavily laden with lust you don't wake up okay you wake up sexually aroused in your waking state you still have the feelings and you likely also linger in you they likely also sort of linger well into the day and whoever it is that you were dreaming in these relations with you will also think about them pretty much all the day long because that's the thing about sex dreams the sex in the dreams is so much better than what you would experience in waking life and the feelings the lust the passions are also that much loftier it's like a, a fantasy is lived out in your dream to a point where you linger after it in waking life given that it is so unattainable in waking life it is so unattainable in waking life so therefore the feelings that are inspired in your heart through a corobella spell they are so lofty in a dream and they make you feel so good that uh, but however are non-existent in waking life that they linger well into your waking space and can make you look at a person that you looked at that way in your dream differently in the absence of realizing that you gotta snap out of it you end up falling in love you end up dating the guy you end up accommodating the person you believe that it's your own emotions so what's important is to recognize that it's like a dust that needs to settle and in the season of it settling you've got to avoid letting it lodge 
So when you get a nightmare being absolutely enamored with a guy you didn't sign up for that you never liked yesterday, let the dust settle and don't even look at him, avoid him, realize what this is and after a couple of days it'll go away, maybe even a couple of hours. It is written in God's word that resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I got so many such strange nightmares when I was working at MTN of strange random dudes in the office that for me it was like ew when i woke up because i did not like any of them and when i was seeing them in the office because in a funny little strange way and after a couple of days i got over it but to these guys that they're still kind of i remember one dude was uh working in marketing segment manager like why he knows who he is shortly after getting that horrific dream about him where i'm now all besotted with him and i'm marrying him my goodness he kept on like frequenting pacing at my desk asking me questions basically it's like he threw himself in my face so that i would finally be like i don't know look at him and suddenly see the love of my life but all i wanted to do was avoid him because i had this funny dream and it was embarrassing i, I it was just embarrassing to remember what dream i had about him and indeed after a couple of days it just fled from me it fled from me so what you need to do is resist the devil and it will flee from you you don't suddenly just start to have feelings overnight guys for someone that you never could have fathomed yourself with i'm not speaking about a person that over time you start to realize that their smile is actually kind of cute i'm talking someone that day and night black and white all of a sudden you be dreaming bumping and grinding what in the world and the experience was amazing in the dream you are going to if you don't resist that eventually end up doing what it is that you didn't sign up for so that's what was going on with this oki nobody else in that dream was around um from the coven yako kereke and i did not figure that dream out to be what it was because like i said at the time i was in denial about my dreams at the time i i wasn't for me it was like it can't be because these people looked so sweet i told you this dude he gave off ed sheeran but the effeminate ver version you can't i mean a person like that you just want to know no, no, no way under heaven you're going to go and imagine that they're involved in darkness but only after i left that church only after i left that church was i then able to figure out what in the world was going on there first they tried to indoctrinate me by training me teaching me that this is a real deal cessationism there are no gifts of the holy spirit etc when my blog made it clear that that's not working they started to kind of abandon me uh when i needed help when i still kept on coming they tried to hook me up with one of their cult members to be my handler and when that didn't happen well that's when then they were like she gotta go because she keeps on blocking our strategies she is praying for the church that is not praying for itself and soon these women are going to figure out what's going on soon they're going to keep falling pregnant despite us stealing their babies and we are therefore not going to be able to sacrifice the blood that we need to sacrifice to keep it running i told you this was a hard knock cult it was deep and you cannot run an extreme cult without blood being shed so the babies that were not coming into the wombs of these women were not necessarily not coming in they were being aborted they were the conceptions were happening but the women were not carrying to term they were not falling pregnant because they were stealing the pregnancies before they could happen many of these cults will not go and kill a human being that's already been born they that's why so many uh covens operate near abortion facilities or they work with abortion facilities those of you who don't believe that a baby is a whole thriving human being you are naive because satanists know better they know that it is so much so that they absolutely are besotted with collecting the blood of aborted babies the more innocent the better so according to them the bible says that life is in the blood the devil has no life and so he needs blood of human beings to thrive and the purer cleaner untainted that blood the better that's why the occult adores to sacrifice children but more so will they go and wreak havoc in those that are still in the womb especially in a society today that is claiming that babies in the belly are not babies they're not human they are not what they are whatever clumps of cells they will say all these things but like i said the occult knows better they that there was a human any any coven that is successful in what it's doing will always have a human sacrifice element element even if they are not killing karabo that's already walking around they could have put a death curse on me they could have there could have been a high rate of death in the church of grown men and women 
or even children of people just dropping dead getting hit by cars instead it was rather infertility at an astronomical level that was hard to explain it was how could people women gathering in just one ecosystem all be infertile it's not like we live near a river or a water source that is causing infertility in women the greater region here of women are having babies and these women live in this part of the neighborhood so it cannot be the water in that we're drinking or the food that they're eating uh, I, that was what i was I always taken to god what why are the women in just this little church so infertile and it is because they were sacrificing the babies before they could ever be conceived or born i don't know what the process was but in my dream that girl kept on holding the ba the stomachs of the women that were yet to you know have any babies and then they were she was extracting something out of their wombs and throwing it into a dustbin into a dustbin so babies were being thrown into dustbins and then the ones that had already babies that were not born but adopted those were the ones that were taken period like once the women finally accepted that they can't have babies and then they adopted they were the ones that they were able to take the whole womb off and so they no longer touched their bellies and one such woman was uh, one of my friends that I prayed for personally and I was like Lord bless her with a child of her own they've been trying with her husband they're not getting them uh, yes they've adopted the two twins but give her the experience of pregnancy I bet she wants to know what it's like when after praying for her I saw in my dream that they were not even bothering with her anymore because she had already adopted it's almost as if though once they got to the point of adoption that was a contract that they were entering into spiritually to admit that they're giving away all their eggs all of them to this coven Yo, guys, yar, yar, yeah, okay, so yar, hey, Azzy, Bosatani, Bosatani. I was praying and these things were being revealed to me. So now, if that's what you're doing in a church, if that is how you are running a church, if that is where the blood to Satan is going, the one person that's got a revelatory gift, like a gift of sight, prophecy, you're gonna try and get rid of them. They tried to, uh, what do you call this thing? They tried to water down my walk they tried to marry me to a dude i wasn't interested in and you know what like that dude if it was anybody else if it was some handsome dude that i could totally see where he's coming from i would have been duped and deceived i would have like so god made sure it was somebody that i couldn't be attracted to he was too much of a girly girl for my liking otherwise if it was some cute dude ah, i don't know that dude was cute but like manly man i was gonna marry an unbeliever i was gonna do it i know myself I know myself i'm not so strong so as to like at that i used to ignore my spiritual gifts so much that even if god had shown me dream upon dream of this dude being whack i was gonna walk down the aisle and sing at last i was gonna do it i was gonna do it look at imagining myself literally fantasizing about cute red-haired babies coming out of my black belly like can you imagine the exotic nature of that mixed baby and the next thing i can't give birth, i can't have babies gotta adopt when there's no infertility in my family if anything they keep popping babies these women well into their 50s since anybody busy by yima and i'm the only one out of all of them that's not have yo guys i would have felt like less of a woman my family members can pop babies they are so fertile i would have felt like i'm not even a woman i would have wondered what is wrong this can't be genetic this can't be genetic i would have just had so many questions ending up adopting when i could just go on right ahead and have my own babies you know anyway that's what was happening like we sent ole and i was like oh, all right whatever only after only after guys when i left the church did i finally admit what i was being shown because of the way that they treated me so if the persecution in that church never got to a height of basically me being thrown out the synagogue i would have constantly second guessed i would have given them the benefit of the doubt i would have chosen to love them i would have chosen to protect them and i would have chosen to imagine myself accursed to dare dream like this about them it was their persecution of me that made me conclude that they were doing this thing so god was showing me all along but i was saying not these people not these people when then after finally i got out of the church at ne, when everything had like slapped me and they did they did not support me when i was going through a lot that's what made me decide to finally once and for all leave and write about them now in my blog but without uh, calling out the name of the church it was only at this uh, at this stage that then i also dreamt about the recruitment into their coven of that 19 year old girl that i told you guys about that um used to attend this at the time that i was close with i had a dream when everything of mine fell apart like my life was so sad when everything was falling apart it was so heartbreaking and for me to have no one from my church supporting me that was just sad okay 
okay it's one of those like you know when you feel so guilty for not being there for someone that you had a spiritual obligation to be there for like a church leaving one of their parishioners to starve to death and then waiting for the invitation to the funeral when this church member had cried i'm hungry i'm hungry and then they did not serve you know guys matthew 25 is gonna slap in the absence of repentance those pastors and that entire coven like no man's business matthew 25 says when i was hungry you didn't give me food when i was naked you didn't give me clothes when i was prison in prison and sick you didn't visit me when i needed to be invited over into your house you didn't give me hospitality and these people are going to ask god when did i not do this to you for you and the lord is going to say you did not do this for the least of my disciples therefore you didn't do it for me the scattering of the sheep in the last days is a real and dire concern do you understand i was looking at the time there it is a real and dire concern where pastors are going to blatantly walk right past matthew 25 and treat their own parishioners like that be in a position to serve a suffering saint in the body and because they are praying for your church and you are a sorcerer you will let that woman's child die from malnutrition or go to school without shoes on their feet or you get my point and they are going to be among those who say at the last day lord lord have i not prophesied in your name and in your name cast out many demons and in your name did many mighty miracles and god will say depart from me work of iniquity i never knew you not only did you disregard my daughter's needs but when she was a member of your church you absolutely 100 percent refused to answer her questions not only did you not support her when she was there for you but you also after her losing everything in life everything excommunicated her even when she was no longer a member of you she was no longer attending your services and you excommunicated her in front of people that had privy or access to her blog they had access to see what in the world she was writing and because you were busy teaching a destructive heresy and a doctrine of demons you caused your entire church to downplay all the prophecies that she wrote about you in her blog i never called anyone out i only shared finally what dreams i was getting about my church in my blog because i realized after losing everything what they were doing and i hoped to help the members therein that was sent to that, that basically also knew of my blog i hoped to heal them come out from her my people lest you should partake in her place i hoped to do something of that nature whoever would get out would be healed women would suddenly find themselves able to have babies after leaving that church because they were sacrificing babies they were sacrificing kids like one yeah so if they left and if they started to pray and if they consecrated themselves to god they would suddenly have no qualms with popping baby after baby after baby after baby fresh after the one is out of the womb there's another one in the oven it's like what happened why was i so infertile how in the world fine you've got these beautiful twin boys now that you've adopted good i mean they needed a home but you've also got all these other four biological children to you basically what under heaven it is that was happening with hannah like just like they were as opposed with hannah her womb was the one that was close to god eventually opened it but in some instances the occult is the one that's frustrating the living daylights out of parishioners i had a dream of this uh, chick that used to go to it that, that i was tight with of her like you know like because of the way that everything was falling apart in my life and it was sad what was happening to me was sad anyone with a conscience would have bled inside upon watching my story i had a dream of her the young adults ne, that that ministry all of them they were in some locker room it looked like it was a high school locker room where people changed like clothes and stuff and they were sitting down on, on on chairs in some dark 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 room locker room and their heads were bowed down in sorrow like they were ashamed of themselves and this chick the the one the the the, the 19 year old Wokovitz, stood up and she was like crying and she was like i told you i didn't want to do this i told you i didn't want to do this and she was hitting them she was hitting them she was like i told you i didn't want to do this and she kept on hitting every last one of them all of the young adults in the thingy and as she was busy hitting them they did not retaliate fight back nothing they were just sitting there bowed down like so ashamed of themselves 
upon what eventually ended up happening to me and this girl was so guilty and also because we were so close and shared so much in common and she joined the church because she was actually looking for a place to survive the sorrow at her house where she was living the parents were divorcing and everything i told you she and her family was also persecuting her she was looking for a place to fellowship and she got recruited into the occult instead and she abided unlike the black kid that attended university who saw what was happening did not join but kept quiet did not tell anybody that, that I told you guys that I suspect the future for that boy is such that he's likely going to walk away from Christianity apostatize because of what happened to him in the church he did not embrace the call to join the occult but this girl did this girl did they, we, they, they recruited her she did what they wanted her to do all the rituals and everything and when what happened to my life happened everybody felt so bad and so guilty including her that when they were busy sitting there reading or listening to what was going on maybe even after i got excommunicated without having done anything wrong she stood up in that locker room i don't know what was with the locker room but it was a very dingy dark environment and she was like i told you i don't want to do this i don't want to do this and she was hitting them she was hitting them and they were just letting her wrestle them like that Next part.